Today, we're going to be adding some extra USB ports to the P1S, allowing us to plug in whatever the hell we want. Maybe that's a bit too much. Then we're going to be installing a brand new lighting system, and we'll see if it's better than the original. BQ was cool enough to send these out to me for free, but this has no impact on my thoughts of the products or what I'm going to say. So I'm going to tell you what I like about these things, and also what I don't. To start us off, we're going to install the Panda Hub. This essentially turns your single USB port into a dual USB port. You'll need to print two parts for the hub to go into. Then you'll need a soldering iron to install the heat inserts. If you don't have one yet, I'd highly recommend buying one as this tool has a plethora of uses in the world of 3D printing. Place the first insert as shown. Then crank up your soldering iron and gently press it down until it sits flush. If you aren't very experienced at doing this, I would recommend placing a wooden block underneath so you don't accidentally damage the table you're using. Then do the same for the other side. Now it should look like this. Place the hub inside, put the other half of the case on top, and screw it in with one of the provided screws. Let's head over to the printer. You'll need to remove the screen. Simply push it up with one hand, while pulling it right with the other, and it should pop right off. Remove this screw. Now all you need to do is plug it into the original USB port inside the machine. Now use the remaining screw that was provided and screw it back into this hole. Then slide the screen back on, Awesome, now we have two USB ports at the front. But what if I want more? The Panda Branch gives you an additional four USB ports on the back, drawing its power from the AMS port. I printed this in PETG at a 0.2 layer height, but I would suggest printing in a lighter material and at a layer height of 0.16, so this text comes out a bit nicer. The self-tapping screws you get with this are useless on the current design, because for some reason they have hollowed out the very point you need to screw them into. So I fixed this in Blender by throwing in some cylinders and merging them with the mesh. You can find this file for free on my Patreon page. Once you now have the working part printed off, let the self-tapping screws do their thing and screw them in. You'll be drilling them into plastic, so this will take a little bit of elbow grease. Once you've screwed them in properly, use the other two self-tapping screws for the side, and this is what it should look like. Now remove the spool holder, don't worry, we're putting it back on. Place the two remaining long screws in the branch assembly, and place the spool holder on top. Now screw it in, then take the cable from the box and connect the AMS port to the top in port. I ended up zip tying the cable to the back of the printer just to make it look a bit cleaner. And congratulations, you now have 5 billion USB ports on your printer to connect stuff to. Now let's install the light. Unfortunately, it doesn't utilize any of these shiny new USB ports we've just added. Instead, it takes the input from the original light. Remove the cover as shown. And don't worry if you damage it during this process as the light comes with a new one. Now place it in the printer under the metal lip with the pointed side facing toward the back of the printer. It should snap on easily with the magnets. Now you need to place this cable through this hole. Once that's done, remove the existing cable from this socket by gently pulling it out. This is the splitter we'll be using to connect everything together. Keep in mind that the pins are very small and delicate, so please be careful with this process, and ensure you're putting the right cable into the right port. Also, this was originally designed to use both lights simultaneously, however it is now recommended to only connect one light at a time, as having both on can cause issues with your printer. This is the cable we'll be connecting first, it has a different connection type on each end, one with a clip, one without. Place the connector without the clip into the top left port as shown. Make sure it is oriented properly as it only fits in one way. Now place the cable from your new light into the bottom right of the splitter. Now take the remaining cable and attach it to the circuit board of the printer, the same place where you disconnected the original light. Remove the blue plastic to expose the adhesive underneath, and place it out of the way. Congratulations! Now you have more USB ports to use, and an upgraded light. We'll get into testing the new light shortly, but let's first find some new gadgets we can use alongside our new USB ports. For starters, you can add a secondary light to the top, or inside the printer, and have them hooked up to a smart device so you can turn them on and off remotely as needed. You can also use some other products like the Panda Touch or the Nomi. And you can hook up an extra webcam so you can get a much clearer picture from the front or the top instead of relying off the one frame a second webcam that comes with the printer. So having these extra ports can really help optimize our 3D printing experience and gives you extra options for any future upgrades. Now let's see how this new light compares to the original. 
For these tests, I set my camera to manual mode and kept all the settings exactly the same. Here's a video of what the stock light looks like in complete darkness. And here's a video of what the Panda Lux looks like in complete darkness. You can clearly see that the Lux light is much brighter. But when we move over to what the internal camera sees, the results are a little bit different. Here are the two lights side by side. From the internal camera's point of view, the stock light only illuminates a quarter of the build plate. The Panda Lux illuminates half of the plate. But I feel like this has a lot to do with the built-in camera and not the light. Because when I looked at the printers with my own eyes, the entire build volume was lit up with the Panda Lux and barely visible with the stock light. While both of these lights did create dark spots on the plate itself, I feel like this could easily be resolved by having a camera that could automatically adjust its exposure properly. So I would definitely say this is an improvement over the original light, but to utilize it to its full potential, you'll probably need to monitor your printer with a different webcam, or just get a strip light that illuminates the entire printer. What I liked. I really like how the light just snaps in perfectly with the frame of the printer, and how the splitter came with some adhesive to stick it somewhere out of the way. I like the fact that I have so many USB options now, giving me the ability to install other gadgets without worrying about how I'm going to power them. The branch has LED lights indicating if there is an error, and fail safes in place to prevent overloading the system. At first I wasn't a fan of having to print the enclosures for the branch and hub, but it was kind of fun assembling everything, plus it gave me the freedom to make it whatever colour I wanted. What I didn't like. If you're going to leave a link to the STL on your website, don't put it inside an image and make it not clickable. <laughs> a mild inconvenience. If you're going to provide the screws, please make sure they are the right ones. Or at least if you don't want to change the screws, change the base plate to the one that I made. So the screws at least work. There seems to be a fair amount of redundancy on these devices, making it a little confusing when installing everything. But I'm sure these will be removed for future versions. While none of these mods are going to make your prints look any better and you could certainly live without them, they do offer a number of quality of life improvements that make your printer just easier to use. And I'd recommend trying them out for yourself. Also, I've recently started a Discord community where you can hang out with other like-minded 3D printer enthusiasts. You can show off your designs, get help with any print issues you're facing, or even talk about your pets. This is my doggo called Luffy, standing in front of his alter ego. Apparently he likes the smoke pipes. The server is currently free to join, but eventually I'll be making it a paid server, so get in while you can. Early joiners will remain free forever. This also means that you can talk to me directly to request specific videos, or just to say hi. I really look forward to seeing you there. Hope this video has helped, thanks for watching.